My name is Rubidium. I am a filmmaker and an educator and the director of The Devil's Fortune. The film is a dramatization of the real life hunt for Saddam Hussein's missing billions and all the lives that have been lost on the quest for this modern day cursed treasure. The film deals with the corruption of the global financial system and how greed causes many of us to willfully turn a blind eye to where our profits come from. We shot the film in 17 days in 2020 on the Canon C500 Mark II and the Sumi Red Primes. It was very start and stop because of COVID, uh, but we made some changes to the script and locations to substitute, say, enclosed spaces for outdoor ones uh, so that we could finish the film. I'm a big believer that a film can be made outside of the Hollywood superhero sequel factory and that those films can ask questions that people in power aren't interested in asking. The leaner, more efficient and cheaper that you can make a film, uh, the less investment you need to raise and the more time you can spend actually making the film than pitching and in meetings. The Canon cinema cameras are unmatched in the visual quality and control that you get for the price. Being able to own the camera instead of having to hire it makes a huge difference. It means that you can shoot tests and develop confidence with what the final result will look like, or you can go and shoot inserts or small scenes with the lead actor and just a couple of crew members. And those smaller scenes can make a real difference to the final quality of the film. Having a camera that you own and know how to use because you shoot with it every single day is always gonna be better than one that may have better specs on paper, but that you don't have experience with. I think Canon is unique in the cinema world in that it has an upgrade path all the way from the $400 Rebel T7, the $33,000 C700 full frame. You can start wherever your skills and your budget allow, learn to get a great image, and then take those same skills and understanding and experience with you to the next camera as you upgrade. Over the past 15 years, I've gone from the, the 50D to the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, the C70 and the C500 Mark II. And each time I kept most of my lenses, uh, my understanding of the menus and the exposure tools. And as I got more cameras, the older ones usually became the B and C cameras to my new A camera. And because they share a universal color science, they cut seamlessly. The chase scene um, in the old Griffith Park Zoo in The Devil's Fortune uh, doesn't have a lot of BTS for it because our day was cut short by rain and I commandeered the BTS crew to actually start shooting footage and shots that ended up in the movie. And the C200 that they were shooting on cuts seamlessly with the A camera. You just have so much more flexibility, and so much more redundancy when you're shooting all on the same brand. The Sumi Ray Primes meant the footage looked great and distinctive and beautiful right out of camera. We shot C-Log 2 and just by applying the preview LUT that I had built for the shoot, we were 80% of the way there with the color grade. Focus Assist was another amazing tool that we used a lot because it allows uh, me, the director, and the focus puller to share the same monitor and know that the image is sharp without covering the whole screen with focus peaking or something else that diminishes the visual appeal of the image. Pushing in on the frame with the sensor crop was another tool that really allowed us to make our day and get incredible results really, really quickly. There were days when the 35mm Sumi Ray didn't leave the camera because we could use it to shoot the wides, we could crop in on a 35mm sensor size to shoot our mids and close-ups, and then we could crop in again to the 16mm to shoot our inserts and extreme close-ups. All without having to wait to change a lens, all without having to potentially expose the sensor when it was rainy or dusty outside. It really is like changing lenses with the touch of a button. And even at the 16mm crop, the image is still super sharp and really usable. When I first got the C200, uh, it was a real learning curve for me because before that I'd only ever shot with DSLRs. A dedicated cinema camera uh, has so many more tools for exposure, for sound, so many more options as far as codecs go. I started experimenting and uploading a lot of these experiments to my YouTube channel, The Crimson Engine, and it's grown to 70,000 subscribers over the past couple of years and has become a real destination for Canon cinema content. As I've got new cameras, I've continued making tutorials, but I soon discovered that there was a real 
need for longer form, uh, more detailed educational content. What I think people wanted to do when they got a new camera, no matter their experience level, was sit down for a couple of hours with someone that had used the camera, put it through its paces, had experience with it, and teach them everything that they needed to know to get a great image. I created Canon Masterclass that has multi-hour long form tutorials for every cinema camera in the Canon range. We have dedicated classes for C200, C70, uh, R5, R5C, and C500 Mark II. We've since expanded to over 30 courses that cover everything from lighting, blocking, grading, producing, and a ton of other content. Canon Masterclass currently has over 2,000 students and is the largest resource of its kind. I've always found that the freedom to experiment is what leads to advances, and it's only by trying things that you've never done before that you're able to breathe new life into your filmmaking. I really believe that the future of filmmaking belongs to people who have the courage to pick up the camera, learn how to create the images and tell the stories that only they can tell and make the world a more interesting place.